Damn, third coffee already? Yeah, I think it's time to invest in subnets. What is up guys, it's Raro from Trendsetter Capital. Today I'm going to try my very best to simplify what the hell is dynamic tau emissions and how do they work? Because I kid you not, it took me one month to understand this. I was at my local McDonald's breaking my head trying to understand how emissions work. After you've watched this video, you're going to be able to understand how to interpret the famous table on tau stats that everybody is looking at. And I'll be showing you a cool trick I use to see if a subnet is overvalued or undervalued and if it's still worth buying at current prices. So if you want to position yourself in subnets properly, you need to understand the basics. Guys, if only you understand this right here on the screen, you're already above 75% of BitTensor holders. Bitcoin actually halves approximately every four years. However, Tao halves by issuance. It's a difference, guys. There's a nuance. So Bitcoin is hard-coded at 210,000 blocks. However, Tao is also hard-coded, but by issuance at 10.5 million. Right now, there's a little under 10 million tokens issued. And once we reach that, this is going to mark the first halving ever. In Bitcoin, there's a thing called difficulty adjustment where the protocol automatically calculates how many machines or ASICs are plugged into the protocol to mine Bitcoin and it adjusts that difficulty every two weeks and this effectively lowers or you know increases the time it takes to produce a block but roughly it stays around you know 10 minutes long each block and this is the equivalent of tau recycling so every time a miner uh, registers his neuron or a subnet owner registers a new subnet or deregisters he gets kicked out or there's just like emission fees that are inactive this effectively goes back into the uh, BitTensor Tau issuance, which pushes back the halving. BitTensor Tau has 12 second blocks, okay? So it goes pretty fast. When miners, they mine Bitcoin, they receive it directly into their wallets. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. But you as a staker, or you know, if you wanna understand emissions, BitTensor Tau emissions, they go into something called a liquidity pool, which is Tau token paired with each subnet is alpha token. So there's 120 different liquidity pools right now. And the actual daily emissions right now is 3.25 Bitcoins found every 10 minutes by Bitcoin miners. But for Tao, it's one every 12 seconds plus up to two alpha tokens in the liquidity pools per 12 seconds. I'm gonna explain that in a minute, but right now this is all you need to know. And also super, super important. In BitTensor, there's two concurrent halvings running at the same time. There's the Tau halving and there's the Alpha halving that have their own time frames. So this is where it's going to get a bit more difficult. So, you know, pause the video, rewrite it, take some notes, but this is super important for you to understand. Also, the last Bitcoin will be completely mined in the year 2147. However, Tau, it's a bit quicker. It's until 2069. So as you can see, both of these cryptocurrencies have a long-term vision. That's why I think, you know, the holders will be very strong in the coming years. And mind you guys, right now, Tau is $340. During the first halving of Bitcoin, the price was 12 bucks. You know, the internet wasn't as big, but you can see how information moves quickly nowadays we have the same amount of tokens 21 million but we're already at 340 bucks so this is something you need to understand guys bitcoin was 12 bucks at its first halving and we're right there right now with bitensor tau sitting at 340 so no it's not expensive it is a lifetime opportunity let's say a subnet token is priced at 0.1 tau per alpha so in the liquidity pool there's going to to, to have 1 million Tau tokens and 10 million Alpha tokens. And as you can see, uh, 1 million Tau tokens is equivalent to 10 million Alpha tokens at a price of 0.1. Do not look at this picture. This is just an example of Tau stats. This is subnet 64 shoots. As you can see, they have 150,000 uh, Tau tokens and almost 1.5 million Alpha tokens. But if you can see the fiat amount on the side, both have a 50% fiat amount. And this is something the liquidity pool automatically regulates. 
Any sudden token alpha price, you get it by dividing the amount of tau into the pool by the amount of alpha into the pool. It's going to give you a price. Guys, bear with me. So when I didn't understand anything about emissions, you know, I went on tau yield and I saw these big ass APYs, 240%, uh, 200%. This is subnet 97, by the way. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, yo, what is this scam? Anything offering me more than five or 10% yield where is the money coming from? I did not understand that. And this is super important for you guys to, you know, to grasp. So like I said, key concepts you guys need to understand. So the first one is called Tau into the subnets liquidity pool. And you can obtain that by dividing the alpha price of that subnet token by the current sum of subnets. Okay, so SOS is sum of subnets. So right now it's around 1.06. So let's take an example which shoots. The alpha price is 0 0.10 approximately and sum of subnets is hovering around 1. So this gives you that shoots every 12 seconds receives approximately 0 0.1 tau out of the 1 tau per block. Remember what I said here guys. So shoot gets about 10% of the total tau block emissions then you have something called alpha in so you take that value here tau tau in and you divide it by the subnets alpha price so when when you divide these two numbers you get 0 0.94 so what this means is that every 12 seconds shoots gets 0 0.94 alpha injected into its subnet liquidity pool as well with that being said, this is exactly, you know, where the money's coming from. So right now there's 7,200 tau per day emitted into subnet, uh, subnet's liquidity through the protocol. And approximately, I say approximately 14.4K alpha emitted uh, into the protocol because there's something called alpha in that we just discussed and something called alpha out. I'm going to get to that in a minute. And basically, from my understanding, why I, why I think these APYs are so high is because we're extremely early. There's not a lot of holders right now that hold subnet tokens. Maybe some subnets have only 500 holders. So this, you know, gives you a large portion of the pie when there's emissions. We haven't gone through one halving, guys. So these are the types of opportunities you guys need to seize and, you know, earn those juicy APYs. And like I said, right now, there's one tau emitted to the chain per 12 seconds and up to two alpha tokens per 12 seconds. I say up to this is an important concept. And around December 2025, so in a couple of months, it's going to be 0 0.5 tau and only one alpha. So as you can see, it's the same concept as Bitcoin. It's going to get more competitive. You know, there's going to be less emissions. So, you know, the price has only one direction, in my opinion, and that's up. The second alpha token that is emitted by the protocol goes to subnet participants, all right? So out of the one alpha that is emitted every block, 18% goes to subnet owners, 41% goes to validators. These are the people with which you stake and 41% goes to miners. These are the people that cause dumping pressure, but you can't blame them because they have a lot of expenses. They, ru they run hardware and they just have high electricity bills. So when you see graphs that look like this down 90%, okay, this means that the subnet doesn't have any revenue or doesn't have any hype and miners just keep on plummet plummeting the price because they have too much expenses to, to pay. So once they get a hold of the, the alpha tokens, they just sell it, they dump it, which causes, you know, a price crash. So now you need to completely understand this picture right here, but it's super simple. The, the middle part right here, child, parent, hotkey, literally forget it. It doesn't apply to you. You're not a validator. You're just a staker or maybe even a miner. So 41% out of one alpha is 0 0.41. Don't mind the zero here. It's a mistake. It's 0 0.41. So once you stake on a validator, like I said, the validator needs to split it between alpha stakers on that same validator and root stakers on that same validator as well. It took me freaking one month to understand that. But these right here are validators. Tau bot, Roundtable 21, whatever. These guys, they have people who stake with them either on root, which is subnet zero, or on different kinds of subnets. But you always stake 
through a validator. Once you understand that a validator has right now 0.41 alpha to give to root stakers and uh, subnet stakers per block of 12 seconds, they need to split it in two ways right here. So the first portion, don't mind the numbers, there's an error as well, there's an extra zero. But here are the um, alpha subnet stakers on that validator. So the 10% right here is the validator cut. So a validator, he has a lot of expenses. He also runs machines and all sorts of things. He has a warehouse. So they take 10% of that 0.41A and the rest goes to stakeholders. So this is where your APY comes from. If there's not a lot of people holding that alpha tokens, you are obviously going to get a higher APY. And then there's the root part uh, which they need to split as well. They also take a 10% from that. So a bit goes to them and uh, you know, on that same validators, there's also people staking on root who don't wanna take any risk. They get that part, you know, minus a zero because there's obviously an error. And you know, there's a certain thing called root proportion, which is super important right now. But in general, the top subnets right now, they have root propor proportions uh, basically around 30 or 40%. And if a subnet is newer, it might have a root proportion of like 80, 90, 100%. And this is extremely bad for you if you're on that validator staking onto a, a, you know, that subnet which just launched. You're literally feeding root stakers free APY and you aren't getting nothing. Because until this isn't going down, uh, the validator is also, is only going to pay the root stakers. So be careful of that. Um, you know, if you're staking on a new subnet, it might be a really high number and you can see the sticky notes right here. You know, it's it's a new subnet, it's, it's higher risk and you know, there's just less rewards for alpha stakers. So, and this is just some general uh, staking tips, you know, you always stake through a validator and your APY is basically determined by something called V-Trust, which is between zero and one. Most of the validators are like at like 95%. And the validator stake weight, this is just a fancy way of saying how many people dele delegated tau to that validator. The more tau that is de delegated, the more power that validator has. You also need to be tracking your APY in case you know your valid validator gets deregistered and you need to switch the validators. And you can also just freaking check uh, tau.app. Tau tau you just go here, you go to the validator section, you just hover over right here and you're gonna see the percentages. So we have tau5 giving 130%, yuma giving 130, etc. There's also a super important BitTensor update that happened a few weeks ago. And you know, if the alpha price goes under its subnet's emission, Yuma Consensus starts an alpha buyback program until you know that subnet has a higher price than its emission once again, then it stops. And this simply indicates a potential low of the subnet. So let me give you an example. Right now, Shoots has an emission of 9.94%. So if the subnet price goes under 0.1, for example, it goes to 0.08 and a giant whale dumps 5,000 alpha, Yuma consensus is actually going to remove alpha from the liquidity pool until the price goes back up. So, you know, this gives you a potential low and it's also, you know, a good time to buy if uh, you know that happens. So how do you actually understand if a subnet is overvalued or undervalued simply by looking at this table? Because right now this table probably doesn't mean much. It sounds like gibberish, but you can use pure simple formulas to understand if a subnet like Ridges is overhyped at the moment. So if we go to the board, this is a scenario I ran with Bitcast, you know, a while ago. And I ran three different scenarios, bear, conservative and bull. Everything is about the sum of subnets. So right now we're hovering around 1.07. And if you apply this simple formula right here, take a future price that you think your subnet can reach and divide it by a future sum price that you think is also realistic. I gave you rough numbers right here, 1, 1 1.5 and 2.3 best case. Okay, this is going to give you a future emission percentage. 
Once you have that in mind, you can run the actual scenario. So the bare scenario, I think Bitcast can reach 0.06 divided by one. It gives you an emission percentage. Then there's the bull case as well. It can reach 0.15 maybe divided by the best case sum of subnets value. It gives you also a 6% emission. And if you go to the top subnets right now, look at these emission rates. These are, aren't far-fetched from my analysis. Shoots has 10%, Ridges has 8% almost, Celium has 6%. So it's nothing too crazy for me to ask 6% emissions from Bitcast. And this gives you the price, your sale price. And you know, if we can see Ridges right now at 7.64%, do you actually think ridges can capture 40 percent emissions because if ridges goes to 20 percent emissions that's only a th like a 3x from here at at one sum of subnets so do your mathematics your risk if you invest in ridges right now is 100 percent but your upside is like a 3x compare it with like flame wire that is at 0.16 percent if flame wire goes to 1.5 percent emissions as a like a, a market share it's almost a 10x so you, you see the risk rewards aren't the same between you know a new hyped up subnets like ridges and something unknown that crypto twitter isn't even mentioning like flame wire there you have it guys i hope you enjoyed this video if you simply understand bittensor and dynamic tau emissions you'll be ahead of 95 to 99 percent of tau holders most people don't even care they just buy the token they hold they go out to walk their dog they don't even know what they're doing but if you understand what i just showed you in this video you'll be a top one percent tau holder you'll be on your way to finding gems because there's many more opportunities like ridges there's going to be plenty of them so just keep an abundance mindset know your stuff study the game and you'll find gems